So on this next example, again, we're trying to find the inverse. Now, I talked about 1 to 1. What 1 to 1 means is that for every x, there's exactly an only one y. Only one y. So let's look at a, the common 1 to 1 function, or one of the more popular is the identity function. At 2 is equal to 2. At negative 3 is equal to negative 3. They don't have to be the same, but just for every x value, there has to be only one y value. So what comes into the problem here is when we graph x squared plus 1, You guys would agree that 1 and negative 1 have the same y value, right? So that's not considered 1 to 1. It has to be unique. They, they, every x value, they cannot share a y value, all right? It's, this is still a function. It's still a function without looking at your phone, but it's not 1 to 1. Another way to look at that, OK, another way to determine if something is 1 to 1 is to use the horizontal line test. Okay, so something is one to one is pe if it passes the horizontal line test. This does not pass the horizontal line test, so therefore it, the inverse is not a function. However, in the example that we are doing, there's been a restriction placed on this for only x values greater than zero. And oh, we've been practicing restrictions, right? So let's go ahead and do that again. So I have x squared plus one. But I only want to graph this for x values that are now greater than or equal to 0. So this graph really just looks like this. Uh, is this now 1 to 1? Is it now past the horizontal line test? Yeah. Yes. So now I can find the inverse. So now I can find the inverse of this. Um, and, I'll, and I'll show you what I mean. So again, kind of steps. We have this as y equals. So we're just going to set x is equal to y squared plus 1. Swap the variables. Now we've got to solve for y. Subtract 1, subtract 1 x minus 1 equals y squared. Undo squaring by taking the square root. Whenever you introduce the square root, you have to include plus or minus. But in this case, do we have to include minus? No, because we only want the positive version. So therefore, we have positive x minus 1 is equal to y, or y inverse is equal to the square root of x minus 1. And let's just go and graph that. If I was going to graph the square root of x minus 1, that look like that, right? What if it was plus or minus? What would the minus of that look like? That would be a reflection about the y-axis. Do you guys see how the plus or minus makes that not a function, right? That's why it's important to have something one to one. Because look, you guys, that works. The problem with it, if it's not one to one, the inverse is not a function. So that's why it's either you're going to get a problem like this and say, hey, does it have an, does it have an inverse? And you'd say, no, it's not one to one. Or it will be restricted, and it'll say, find the inverse, in which in case we can. Um, the, other, the other thing I want to mention to you is, you know, again, let's look at the domain here. The domain of this function, it's restricted, is from x to 0. Or I'm sorry, x is greater than or equal to 0. And then if I was going to say, what is the range? So the domain is given to us. 0 to infinity. But what if I said, what is the range of the function? What is the range of this function? Now, again, you could look at this and say, well, I know what this graph looks like, right? I know what that graph looks like. I can see the range is 1 to infinity. Yes? But what if you're really, really bad at graphing, which some of you are like, ooh, yes, that's me. I do not remember the graphs. Let's go ahead and find the range, is the range of the function is the same as the domain of the inverse. So let's look at this. What is the domain of this? What is the domain of this function, which is the inverse function? One to infinity. Okay, and that will come important here in the next um, 